and welcome to another episode of 8-Bit Retro Refix. And in this episode, what we're going to be doing is recapping this Amiga A600. It was given to me with a lot of other stuff from uh, from Tony, which you'll have seen in previous episodes. we were repairing Tony's drives, Commodore 64s, etc. So what happens with this one is when you switch it on, it either gives you a red screen, or a black screen, or a grey screen, or it comes on and plays perfectly fine. So what I've found in past experience is the electrolytic capacitors leak on these boards and pretty much they all need to be changed on, on every single of these Amigas. Uh, the A500 Pluses also have a Vitara battery on them which, which leaks and corrodes all the boards so they need to be taken off straight away. So if you do have an A500 Plus I suggest you cracking it open and just cutting the, the little Vitara battery off the board. It only keeps the clock um, in time for you, that's all it does. So it's not an issue just to remove that if you don't want to replace it with another one. So what we're going to be using on this episode is we're going to be using Retro Benchy's capacitor kit. I've used these kits before, they're quite good. And I do have plenty of capacitors about, but I do like to use these kits. Oops. These kits are really good. Everything's marked for you. You've got colour coordinates down the side. You've got colour circled around all the caps to tell you where the locations are. They all come in a nice little little bag. With all the capacitors and little labels. Even comes with a nice little sticker. So we can put that on the bottom and date it for, for them so that people know when it will last recapped. So all these kits that come out, as I said I've used them before, they are really good. It's good quality as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the A600 apart. I'm going to remove the motherboard. Pull out the heat shield from off the motherboard, and then I'm going to come back to you once we've got back to the board, bare board. I'm not going to bore you with watching, letting you watch it, me strip it all down again. You've probably watched plenty of videos that show you how to strip these down. There's only four screws in the bottom, and the top comes up. Disconnect the cables, pop the top off, go around, take all the board screws out, take all the screws across the back or the back row near the, near the rear connectors. And lift it out and separate the shielding from the motherboard. So I'm going to do that now and then we'll pan down and get right close into the board um, and we'll have a look at these capacitors and see what's going on. Okay so see you back shortly. Okay so here we are with the board out of the A600 down to the bare bones um, what we're going to be changing is all these capacitors around here, every single one of them around here. There's one up here. If we come over back to the keyboard connector, there's two at the back here for the audio. And there's another through one up here. There's one here. If we come over this side, and there's one here. Oops. Sorry, I keep moving the camera. One here, one here. So there's not too too many to do on this board. Oops, side up here as well. But what I wanted to show you is if I go try and go close. I don't know how close this is going to go now. I don't know whether you can see this. Let me just move the board. See if I can get you a better angle. So I don't know whether you can see there now. It's quite difficult, but. I'm trying. Oh. Sorry guys. Try and get a pen. So I don't know whether you can see now, but you can see there's a pencil. You can see all these chip legs down here are all gone dark, all along here. 
you can see this one here on the capacitor I'm going to mount it on the back on the stand I'm checking like mm, yeah you can see the darkness on that cap there you can see the darkness all the way around here if you see anything dark a bit like uh, like, a, like I pointed out down these legs around here dark solder usually points out to um, capacitor leakage so we can see around here around the power sections we can see I'll keep zooming in a bit you can see all the darkness these caps look like they've been moved I don't know why but you can see they're getting down there with that leg there and that cap it's gone dark so that's a, a massive indicator so that's a massive indicator that the capacitors are leaking which with the, on the power side that's going to give you problems you know when you try when you try to power it on and the capacitance is not correct it would be sending wrong wrong signals or waveforms through to the chips and they won't be understanding it so so I'm going to get down there now and I'm going to have a look at all these and mark them all down, write them all down and uh, get these capacitors moved off the board once they're off I'll come back to you and let you have a look right so I've gone ahead and removed all the capacitors I've left these two in up here for the audio files at the moment I'm going to come back to them shortly I need to remove this connector port to get into the other side of them to do it correctly so I don't know if you can see on camera I'll just try and move this around here a little bit Let's see if I can get you to zoom in, but I don't think it'll go too far, but we'll give it a try. So, there's lots of different ways you can remove these capacitors. Um, one of them is by cutting them off using cuts, which I do not like doing. I'm just snipping the capacitor um, and then taking it off the leg I, I do feel as though it puts too much stress on the legs I really don't like doing that um, another way is a heat gun just put a bit of flux around the capacitor legs and then you can uh, put the heat gun until you push it off uh, my little way is that I go into the side of the capacitor and warm it and lift gently I go to the other side warm it lift gently and I keep doing that until the capacitor falls off, um, which I've done, I've done, we've, we've, I've done it hundreds of times, thousands of times, if you like, um, and it's always worked perfectly fine. As you can see, if I fetch it round to this side here, if I can hold it still for you, there you go. You can see how clean and neat and tidy them traces are. That's been lifted, or well, not been lifted. Sorry, but the solder has been removed. And uh, there's another one here. That looks a bit messy, but all that is a little bit of solder. It's fine. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that come off really, really well. Unfortunately, so this pad here had that much corrosion on it. It is just completely disappeared and gone. It's not too bad. I've traced it, and it comes to the, box, the RF box right leg here. This one here, I've traced it again, comes round to the centre leg, and this one here again comes round to the left leg. So it's not too bad for me to patch a couple of wires in there. But you can see on that one, can't you can cut it there look? That looks okay. Yeah, that pad's nice and clean. This one, it's hanging on by a thread. So what I'm going to do with that one is, I'm going to try and lift the pad a little bit if I can and slip a little bit of super glue underneath that pad and see if I can get the pad to bomb back down to the board. If I can't then I'm just going to have to put a patch wire in there and uh, through to that leg over there. That's the only way through it, it's not too bad, it, it, it won't be too bad because it only goes from sort of here to here. And same with these ones on here. So all these three capacitors across the top of the ear have all leaked that badly that all these pads are falling off. These have, That one's gone, that one's gone, and that one's gone. The rest of them are all good. 
Um, this chip down this side down here, I don't know if you can see it on camera with the light. Let's see if I can move the board up a little bit. I'm going to lift the board up a bit and bring it back to you. Focus. That chip looks okay. They did look like some dark legs across top of there, but I'll just reflow them with a solder gun um, just to freshen them up a little bit. Other than that, everything else has come off really well. Um, so I've got to sort these wires out as I said up across the top of the board. RF box. Um, unfortunately, these boards are that old and these pads are that delicate that these things happen. There's nothing much that we can actually do to to stop that really. I mean, heat gun is is a, is a way forward. But as I said, I mean, I I've gone in the back of here first, warmed that pad, lifted it this way. Same with this one over this side. I warmed this back one first because I didn't want to put stress on them because they're too difficult. And if you did do any problems. If you damage this one, it's a lot easier to repair this from this side than it is tucked away inside that RF box there. So I, I might even pull the RF box off completely and, and follow them trace wire, wires round uh, and make sure that that's all in correctly and then put the RF box back down. So it'll look uh, a lot more tidy and need to repair. If I can just move that studio light so you can might be able to see a little bit easier down there. That looks a little bit bare. So yeah, like, like I was saying, I go in with the soldering iron around the back here and lift it this way. So if any damage would be done, it would be done on this leg. Once I've removed this cap, I move into that side into there and lift again. And again, if any damage is going to happen, it'll happen on this pad. And that side, I go in the back side there and touch into that one with a, with a fine soldering iron to then lift it this way so again if anything it was stressing on this pad and as you can see they've pretty much gone that's that's completely disappeared that one that one's nothing and the one that's left is just hanging on by a tiny little thread you can see it moving if I touch it with the pen I'm going to be repairing them up I'll be removing the RF box to gain access uh, to this side of the capacitors that have got these faulty pads on and so I can do a, a better repair on them across the top of there for them. Um, and once I've done all that I'll show you what I've done uh, and it all finished and put back together. Okay? So I've removed the um, RF box and you can see this pad here I can hardly see that. In fact, well, you can actually see that trace that runs up here, comes up here to this one, and it goes down there. And you can also see this one here, look, just there. I'm presuming that came, that one came across to this pad, but I'll have to have a look on schematics for that. So you can see this one here that's gone, and that trace comes along here and down to that via. And you can see the one that's loose up here, that trail up to the top of there. Checks all the way along here, look, and comes into this via here. So, what I'm going to have to do is repair that connection there to that pad, and repair that connection up here down to that pad, and run a wire in from there down to this pad, and we're going to run a tight little wire up there and right across the back side of there to this pad. So that's what I'm going to do to repair them three pads on there. As you can see, it's a very wobbly, is that one. I'm going to try and glue it down, but I don't think it's going to stick that. It's only held on by that little, tiny little bit of trace you can see over there over the white silk screening. So it's going to be quite difficult, that. Just, just to give you a little bit of context to how small this is, I'm just going to bring... Um, I'm just going to bring a ballpoint pen in just to show you how small them traces actually are. So you can see that that pad's not much wider than the end of a ballpoint pen. 
So these are very, very, very tiny. And it's a shame that they've come up. Nothing much we could do about it. It's the electrolytic, electrolytic fluid that's in the capacitors that's corroded them pads away and gone underneath them and, and lifted the pads. So I'm going to get all that repaired up. The RF box has come off. I wasn't too sure whether there were any capacitors inside the RF box, but um, but after splitting it, after splitting it apart, there's actually nothing inside there. There's just them three pins that come out of the back of it there and connect in there. So that's quite good. I'm going to pop that back down on the top. Them three little pins sit in the left three holes. So your left three holes, you've got one, two, three, and then that's just a ground for anything, but it's not actually connected to the RF box anyway. So I'm going to end that video here today, um, and I'm going to get that repaired up. And um, Part two will be out over the next couple of days, finishing up, just to show you that it's all back up and what I've done, and all back up and running again. Um, thank you for watching part one episode of the A600 recap. Um, see you again in the next episode. Bye.